Yeah, so like uh, many other uh, tech giants out there, uh, Microsoft has had an event for developers for over a decade, and it's called Build. So essentially, uh, anybody who is building for the Microsoft ecosystem uh, shows up, and this time it was virtually because they did not do it uh, face to face, uh, to hear uh, what's the best from Microsoft. And Dan, you know, I think we could have talked about 50 different things. So we're going to take uh, one uh, one topic uh, each. So what I wanted to talk about was a project called, uh, sorry, yeah, a project called Volterra. And, uh, is, is you, and Volterra is an ARM developer kit uh, for the Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, compute uh, platform. And, and it is actually a, a piece of, of hardware. And to me, it, it looks a little bit, <laughs> interestingly enough, like, a, like an Apple, uh, like an Apple, Apple TV. But uh, this is to accelerate the ARM ecosystem. We saw a lot of acceleration for ARM uh, in, in, you know, let's say from Apple, right? Their entire top to bottom uh, MacBook lineup. And for that matter, uh, iPhones and iPads are all, all based on the the ARM uh, architecture. Uh, years ago, well, in fact, it's you know Microsoft has been doing it uh, with for a decade, uh, not uh, exactly the same level of of success here uh, as let's say Apple has done uh, with with the M1. But this time, uh, I think it, I do believe that it's different. I mean, first off, what Microsoft has committed to is a top to bottom. Uh, stack commitment, not only for the PC, but also for Azure. So whether it's uh, application development environments, uh, whether it's um, tuning tools uh, and everything uh, in, in between, Microsoft is committed to this. One of the more interesting things that uh, Microsoft talked about was the ability to leverage the uh, ARM ecosystem for AI. And essentially what that is, uh, these are the hard-coded blocks on the Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, processor, which by the way, are twice the size as are on Apple's, to be able to do some really cool stuff. You know, let's say you and I are doing a, a Teams call or a Zoom call and it's automatically giving us the ability where it makes it look like we're looking at the camera, uh, even though we're not. And I'm reading my phone. Exactly. Yeah, you're you're uh, you're <laughs> you know, triple tasking, you know, doing different stuff like you like to do, but people don't actually know that that you're doing it, right? You know, the the whole notion of crumpling up uh, a chip bag, which by the way, can be done on the network, but is done better uh, at the endpoint, um, and I think we've learned more times than not. If you can do something uh, at the endpoint, um, it's a lot more efficient because you don't have to send the data up and down to the public cloud over four or five hops with you know less than twenty milliseconds uh, latency uh, to uh, to do that. So, pretty excited about this. This is a long term a long term commitment from from Microsoft, and I do think that this is uh, important. Uh, while the company did say that this was done in conjunction with Azure for cloud compute, I'm not entirely sure how that works and I need to go off and do this. What I did appreciate though, was the specificity on what they were looking for, which was this automatic framing. I talked about the consistent eye contact and the, the voice clarity and I, Hmm. I may have seen this uh, performed in a lab somewhere, but I couldn't talk about it uh, if uh, if I did. I do think there is magic when you do connect Azure to to the endpoint, and this is a superpower that Apple doesn't have. Right? Apple is not good uh, in the cloud. In fact, uh, they use uh, a lot of Google Cloud <laughs> to do to do what they have to do. So I'm just imagining a hard coded endpoint operating system with uh, very highly tuned APIs that operate on the client system and operate uh, up in Azure. I think good things uh, are, are gonna happen. Uh, sp specifics for the development environment, I mean, looking at a full 
uh, version of Visual Studio 2022, VS Code, Visual C++, .NET 6, Java, .NET. Oh my gosh, Windows Terminal, yay. Hopefully there's Notepad too in there. But y you get the idea here. This was, you know, this is a pretty big commitment and this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody but this connection with the developers is what Microsoft needs to make this a uh, reality. The one other thing that uh, I'll, I'll, final thing I'll say is they did uh, extend the Amazon App Store uh, to more companies than the US. So you can actually run Android apps, uh, select Android apps um, on uh, Windows 11, which I think is pretty cool because when it comes to news applications and you want those, let's say, even basic notifications to be in one place, this is um, this is what I use it for. So cool stuff. Yeah, there's a number of things, and and you know you went pretty deep there. I'm going to go a little wide and quick through a couple of things that caught my attention. I think you know as as we're seeing this ecosystem of developers continue to shape. We've got this multi-cloud future, which we're going to just be talking about so much. And when we talk about the whole VMware Broadcom, why that's so important is because why enterprises are trying to figure out this strategy. And one of the things that Microsoft seemed really focused on, on this, at this year's build was about you know simplifying the, the migration and modernization on Azure. Um, so it did announce a number of things for basically being able to group virtual machines and physical servers, which is going to be the future enabling companies to sort of pause on and off to make migration simpler and be done during non-peak periods. They added a dev box for developers, um, and that's gonna basically create more self-service cloud workstations, um, more pre-configured, more ready to code for the Azure development environment. Um, they also, you mentioned, and I just wanted to point this out with this MAUI framework, basically giving developers um, more ability to build native apps across multiple OSs. And I think that's going to be incredibly important as we're seeing ARM grow in terms of, like you mentioned, um, but we still, we've got Android, we've got Mac, we've got Windows. And the more these companies work to enable developers to develop once, deploy many times, that's going to be very important. So um, you mentioned some of the stuff about the collaborative experiences. I really like the, some of the stuff they're trying to do in teams for hybrid workers. Uh, you know, they have tools that are going to be allowed to create apps, like for live sharing, for instance, um, where you can build apps for, you know, better annotation, editing, sharing content. Uh, this has got to be the future because, like I said, now we were two years into the pandemic. In the beginning, it was like, wow, we can do video. And now it's like, well, we need to get back in rooms together because it's just not enough. Right. You know, and I can see you nodding your head. And then um, finally, and this was probably the thing I wrote about most, which is the Power Platform. They had a number of features. Probably the thing that I liked the best was the redesign of Power Pages. Um, it's got a new design studio that basically makes it extremely simple for non-coders to design and publish, you know, websites. So uh, they've integrated Power Pages with Visual Studio, with GitHub, with Azure DevOps. Um, and so I, I continue to think low code, no code is going to be important. But these are this is a great practical example of how can we quickly get up a a splash page or a group page or an intranet page for our teams, get it up, get it functional, get it working. Quality is there, but also you don't have to be a developer to build it. So, and that's been one of the big features of build all the way along, Pat, you know, and you know this is that really the continuum of developers isn't really just about people who, you know, code in Java and C Sharp and .NET. It's about bringing the continuum of no code and low code over here, all the way to the continuum of that pro developer and making sure we're maximizing all the resources. So. Good conference, lots of uh, lots of things announced. Back good coverage on Volterra. Uh, 